Hi there, my name is Sam and I'm excited to introduce animations on scroll. You can now review any element in a variety of different ways while your visitors scroll down your pages. When an element is selected, for example, this row on the left, you can go to interactions and then under effects, you can find the brand new scroll into view option. Then there are a variety of different animations that you can choose from. And you can simply select any of these animations and never think about it again. But if you want more granular control, you can adjust the presets any way you want. So let's first go over all the different presets. We have fade in right here. With fade in, the selected element will scroll into view by a change in opacity. So we can click on this preview icon right here. And as you can see, the element reveals itself by a change in opacity. Next up, we have slide. With slide, an element will be revealed by either sliding in from the top, bottom, right, or left. Then you can determine the distance. So from how far the element will slide in. Next up, we have float. Float will reveal an element based on movement and opacity. So again, you can decide from which direction it will reveal, up, right, down, or left, and then it will do that in combination with the change in opacity, resulting in a very nice and smooth reveal animation. Again, you can also work with the distance right here. Next up, we have expand and shrink. And these two animations will either scale or downscale an element in combination with opacity. And with this animation, you can set the scale. And with scale, you can determine by what percentage the animation will scale when it's revealed. Then last but not least, we have flip. And as the name already suggests, this will flip the element. And you can do this either on the vertical axis or on the horizontal axis. When working with animations on scroll, there are three critical properties that you need to understand, which are offset, delay, and replay. So right now for this row on the left, let's select the float animation. Then when we preview this review animation in the main preview, you will see that the animation is pretty subtle. And one way we can change this is with the offset. So all the animations will trigger based upon when the element comes into view. So as soon as the element scrolls into view, the reveal animation will start. And with offset, you can determine by how much you want to offset this in pixels. So let's say for this element on the left, the float animation is active, and then we set an offset with 150 pixels, meaning that normally it will trigger the review animation immediately when this element scrolls into view, but now you have to scroll down 150 pixels more until this animation is triggered. So let's preview. And as you can see, the animation will now trigger later and make it more visible. And that's it for offset. The second property we need to understand is delay. As the name already suggests, you can add a delay in milliseconds to delay when the animation starts. So right now for this row on the right, let's also add the scroll into view and then the float animation with an offset of 150 pixels. And then when we click on animation, we can set the delay. So for this example, let's set the delay to 400 milliseconds. Then we go to the main preview. And as you can see, this second review animation is now delayed. Then the last but not least property we need to understand is replay. This option enables you to choose whether the animation should replay when the element scrolls into view again. For example, when scrolling down the page and going up again. So for this row on the left, let's enable replay right here. The same thing for this row on the right, we enable replay. Then let's go preview this page. And as you can see, of course, the animation will be triggered. 
Then when we scroll down and up again, we also get the animation and vice versa. And that's it for replay. When you understand these three properties, you can let your imagination run free and create all types of cool animations. A popular use case that I want to show is revealing a sticky add to cart bar on a landing page or product page when you scroll past the buy box section of that particular page. So let's quickly create that reveal animation. Under insert and then section, we go to the template library. Then we go to banner and we add this section to the page. Here it is. Let's make sure it's not connected to a Shopify product. There it is. Now it's connected to the main product of this product detail page. And then we can work with the reveal animation. So right now, if we preview this sticky add to cart bar is always in view, but we don't want that because for example, in this particular case, we have two add to cart buttons in one view, which is a little bit distracting and weird. So the sticky add to cart bar is still selected. Then we go to interaction, set the scroll into view effect, select the float animation, and then we set the offset to 400 pixels, which is typical for this type of animation. So right now, this animation will only be triggered when we scroll down 400 pixels on this page. So now we preview. As you can see, the sticky add to cart bar is not visible right here. Then when we scroll down, it becomes visible. Then there's one more problem. If we scroll back up, the sticky add to cart bar is still visible and we don't want this. And we can fix this by enabling replay. So we select the animation again, we enable replay. And now when we preview, it appears. And when we go back up, it disappears. And that's it for animations on scroll. I hope you have a good understanding of this new and exciting feature and stay tuned for more product updates.